Have you ever wondered about the microscopic building blocks that make up every living creature, including us? Welcome to the intriguing world of cells, the fundamental units of life that paint the vast canvas of biology. Cells, in all their complexity and diversity, are the building blocks of every organism, from the tiniest bacteria to the largest whale. They come in two main varieties, animal cells and plant cells, each with their own unique structures and functions. For the time being, we're going to delve into the captivating universe of animal cells. These remarkable entities, invisible to the naked eye, are bustling hubs of activity, each performing their part in maintaining the vitality of the organism they belong to, from the protective outer layer called the plasma membrane to the power-generating mitochondria, every component of an animal cell has a role to play. So, are you ready to embark on a journey to understand the function of an animal cell? Imagine a city with a protective wall around it. In the case of an animal cell, this wall is the plasma membrane. Now what's so important about this plasma membrane you might ask? Well, it's not just a simple wall, it's more like a discerning gatekeeper, an unsung hero that plays a crucial role in the life of a cell. Its job is to regulate the traffic of substances, deciding what gets in and what stays out. You see, the plasma membrane is selectively permeable. This means it doesn't just let anything pass through. It's picky, choosing only certain substances that the cell needs, like nutrients and oxygen, and keeps out those that could be harmful. In a way, it's like a bouncer at an exclusive club, only letting in the VIPs, the very important particles. But that's not all. The plasma membrane also helps to get rid of waste materials that the cell doesn't need anymore. It's like a diligent janitor, making sure the cell stays clean and healthy. So it's not just a barrier, it's a gatekeeper, a bouncer, and a janitor all rolled into one. It's a sophisticated system that ensures the cell can function optimally, maintaining a balance between the internal and external environments. So the plasma membrane acts as a doorman, controlling the traffic of substances. Every city needs a control room, and in an animal cell, this is the nucleus. Think of the nucleus as the cell's command center. It's like the mayor's office where all the decisions are made. But instead of handling city ordinances and budget allocations, the nucleus regulates all cell activities. It's the nucleus that determines when the cell grows, divides, and even dies. It's like the cell's brain, making decisions and setting the pace for everything that happens within the cell. But how does the nucleus do all this? The secret lies in the genetic material it contains. The nucleus houses the cell's DNA, the blueprint for the cell's structure and function. This DNA is organized into structures called chromosomes, which are like the cell's instruction manual. These chromosomes contain the genes, the specific instructions for making proteins, which are the building blocks of the cell. The nucleus also contains a smaller structure called the nucleolus. This is where ribosomes, the protein factories of the cell, are made. So you see, the nucleus not only holds the instructions for making proteins, but it also creates the machinery needed to do so. But the nucleus isn't just a passive container for DNA. It's a dynamic structure, constantly interacting with the rest of the cell. It sends out messages in the form of RNA, a cousin to DNA, that carry the instructions from the DNA to the rest of the cell. This allows the cell to respond to changes in its environment and carry out its functions. The nucleus is also the guardian of the cell's identity. Every cell in your body, from your brain cells to your skin cells, contains the same DNA. But these cells are obviously very different from each other. It's the nucleus that decides which genes are turned on and off, determining the cell's function and identity. So, you see, the nucleus is a powerhouse of activity, coordinating and regulating all aspects of the cell's life. It's the central hub around which the cell's world revolves. Without the nucleus, the cell would be like a car without a driver. No city can function without power, right? In the cell, the power comes from the mitochondria, now, let's dive into how these microscopic powerhouses operate. Mitochondria are unique, double-membrane structures found within almost every cell of our bodies. If you could imagine a jelly bean with a wavy interior, you'd have a pretty good idea of what they look like. But what makes them so crucial to our cells? Well, mitochondria are responsible for producing the energy that our cells need to function. And they do this through a process known as cellular respiration. Now, don't let the term cellular respiration intimidate you. It's just a fancy way of saying that mitochondria convert nutrients into energy. Here's how it works. Our cells take in nutrients from the food we eat. These nutrients are broken down into simpler molecules, one of which is a sugar called glucose. 
The glucose then enters the mitochondria. Inside the mitochondria, glucose undergoes a series of chemical reactions. It's a bit like a production line in a factory. Each step of the process produces some waste products, but importantly, it also generates energy-rich molecules called ATP. ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, is essentially the cell's currency for energy. It's what the cell uses to power all of its activities, from moving and growing to dividing and repairing itself. So, in a nutshell, mitochondria are the cell's energy factories. They take in glucose, put it through the production line of cellular respiration, and churn out ATP. And all the while, they're helping to keep our cells, and by extension, our bodies, up and running. But that's not all. Mitochondria also have their own little bit of DNA, separate from the DNA in the cell's nucleus. This mitochondrial DNA is passed down from mother to child, which gives us fascinating insights into human ancestry and evolution. Just like power plants supply energy to a city, mitochondria supply energy to the cell. So next time you flick on a light switch or charge your phone, spare a thought for the tiny powerhouses working tirelessly inside your cells. How does a city transport goods from one place to another? In an animal cell, this is the job of the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus. Think of the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER, as a bustling factory inside the cell. The ER is a vast network of tubules and sacs, like the corridors and rooms of a vast factory. But rather than producing physical goods, the ER is in the business of manufacturing proteins. The ER houses ribosomes, the cell's protein builders. These ribosomes string together amino acids, the building blocks of proteins, in a process known as protein synthesis. But the ER doesn't just produce proteins, it also modifies them. Once a protein is synthesized, it gets folded into its proper shape inside the ER. The ER also adds certain molecules to proteins, such as carbohydrates or lipids, in a process called glycosylation. This process helps proteins to function correctly once they reach their final destination. Now once these proteins are ready, they need to be dispatched to their specific locations, whether it's within the cell or outside it. Here comes the role of the Golgi apparatus, the cell's post office. The Golgi apparatus is a stack of flat membrane-bound sacs. These sacs further modify proteins, adding or removing molecules as required. Once the proteins are fully processed, the Golgi apparatus packages them into small vesicles. Think of these vesicles as the cell's delivery vans. They transport proteins to their designated locations within the cell, or even outside the cell. So, if the ER is the factory where proteins are made and modified, the Golgi apparatus is the post office that ensures they're delivered to the right place. Together, the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus form a vital protein production and delivery system within the cell, and that's how these organelles contribute to the smooth running of the cell. They ensure that everything in the cell is in the right place at the right time. From protein synthesis to protein delivery, they keep the cellular city running like clockwork. These organelles ensure that everything in the cell is in the right place at the right time. So, we've journeyed through an animal cell, but what have we learned? In our exploration, we've witnessed how each part of the cell plays a crucial role, much like the components of a bustling city. Let's take a moment to recap what we've discovered on this journey. Firstly, we encountered the plasma membrane. Acting as the city walls, it serves as a protective barrier, controlling what enters and leaves the cell, ensuring order and balance within its confines. Next, we delved into the nucleus, the cell's control center or the city hall if you will. It holds the genetic blueprint, instructing each part of the cell on their roles and responsibilities. It's the boss that ensures everything runs smoothly and efficiently. Then we illuminated the mitochondria, the cell's power plants. They generate energy through a process called cellular respiration, fueling the cell's activities just as a power station lights up a city. Finally, we explored the endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus, the cell's transport system. They're the postal service of our cellular city, packaging and delivering proteins and lipids where they're needed. All these parts work in harmony, ensuring the cell, and by extension the organism it's part of, functions effectively. So, every animal cell is like a miniature city, with each part playing a crucial role in keeping the city functioning. Isn't that fascinating?